Welcome to Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGEN. Episode number 192.2, Eat Denver Axelar. Uh, we got that little rug from uh, from Twitter, so we're having to restart. Uh, hopefully, we will get this back in, in, in just a second. As we were got rugged, uh, so as we set out, we're going to set out quick tease real quick. Ah, welcome, welcome, little squid. How is life in the fast lane? What's up, dude? I'm just connecting to my AirPods here in a minute. Yep. So as uh, Little Squid uh, finishes up, they're market, What's going on, man? Uh, they're not much. How are you doing? Just finishing up market recap. Uh, I'm doing good, man. Not much, not much is going on uh, here at East Denver. Getting ready for uh, the buildathon and hackathon stuff, and uh, all the main site events. So fun oh, stuff. Oh, nice. You, you're there already. Yes. Yeah. I got in Thursday. So have about five conferences during the during the, this in between now and the sixth oh six sick okay cool but it officially starts uh i thought like this weekend this coming up weekend right uh so the build-a-thon started thursday night uh friday um and then uh the main event starts on the second and then judging for the build-a-thon is on the fifth Cool. I see that you put a hashtag of Axler up here on the on the uh, the name. Uh, any, any particular reason for that? Uh, huge fan of Axler. Uh, they are also they're hosting Interlope um, conference starting Monday, Monday and Tuesday. Um, so really, really excited what they're building out and what they're doing to sort of bridge. Uh, I've partnered with Axler uh, a few times. With helping with bridge bridge specs with different projects, um, really heavy using them on um, our Cosmos to Moonbeam bridge uh, at my decks that I work with work for. Ah, oh, okay. What decks is it? Uh, what decks is it? Stella Swap. Stella Swap. Stella Swap. Okay, I got to dig into that one. I haven't heard of it. Uh, we are the yeah S T E L L A. Some people think I say Stellar Swap, but it is Stella, like the lady. StellaSwap.com. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah XLR is pretty cool, man. Um, I've interviewed them a couple times. Uh, sometimes, like, uh, Ser- Sergey is just a little bit too technical <laughs> when it comes down to, like, uh, explaining some of like the the technology behind XR, but yeah, yeah, really cool shit what they're building, bro. I've used it before, you know. Yep. Uh, I the first time I got to talk to Sergey, it was like three o'clock in the morning, uh, during Paris Blockchain Week last year when I was in Paris. Um, uh, really like talking with uh, Jake Kane, one of their lead BDs, uh, and then the, one of their their community manager. Uh, Kate is another great person to talk with and um, both tech side, but also bringing it down to um, ease of conversation level for, for anyone to sort of understand what they do. Hell yeah. Jake is a, Jake is a G bro. He's fucking awesome. Jake, Jake is a good dude. He is. I, uh, I've gotten to know Jake for, um, feels like it's been a really long time, but it's a little over a year that I've known him. So, um, yeah, me and him have, uh, have done some DGen things. So, yeah. Oh yeah. So how's, how's everything over there in Denver? You having fun? Though? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it, uh, we just, uh, just drove from New York here. So, uh, Denver had a little bit of a, a snowstorm right before we got here and, and just hit like rains while driving through, uh, St. Louis and stuff like that. But uh, that was a quick power through drive. 
fastest I've done it yet. So, yeah. Holy shit! From New York, then? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I made the I made the drive from Michigan to Denver twice. It was nice. I mean, I, I'll tell you that. Like the the scenery is beautiful, but it's twenty hours, man. It's just like nah, not worth it. I'll just I'll just take I'll take a flight next time I go. Okay. Yeah. No. I um I drove to Michigan last June. Um, after um, um, NFT NYC because uh, a friend that I was, was planning on meeting in New York during NFT NYC wasn't able to do that. So I was having to head drive to Las Vegas for a metaverse convention. Um, uh, but instead took a stop, drove up to Michigan um, to meet him and, and uh then then drove to Vegas from there. So that was a that was a long time. It feels like ago. Well, is there any NFT meetups that you're gonna attend while you're over there in Denver? Um there are a few. Um I don't have all of them. Let me see what I got on my calendar. Um I know I'm gonna be trying to set up uh, uh an event or two. Uh tomorrow there's an NFT event at one. Um, my kids, um, they're doing a thing. Um, and then there's a few others and then there's, uh, um, crypto Mondays doing an NFT piece and then, uh, move, uh, is doing a piece as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. If you, if you're interested in um, hanging around with Cosmos people, okay. uh, Jake Hartnell, the founder, the founder of Juno, okay. the founder of Stargaze, founder of Dow Dow, he's going to be over there and he's hosting an event. So if you want like a private invite, um, my community is getting free invites to his event. So if you're interested, let me know. I'm sure like, like the Cosmos, all of the Cosmos people will be there. Yeah, no, I would, I would love that. Uh, I actually have to reach out to uh, um, Django Unchained, uh, see if she's coming out here. Um, got to sit on a, got to speak on a panel with her back in Miami back in December. Um, so she, uh, she's an amazing person from Cosmos, and then uh, you know a few others, but yeah, no, I would love to love to be able to do that. Awesome. Here, let me send you the tweet. Is it okay if I pin it here to the net? Sure, no? go right ahead. Okay. Jumbotron that away. I know Jake, dude. And Jake is, uh, he'll, he'll throw a banger. He'll throw a banger event. Yeah. Just give me a sec. Um, I'm trying to trying to think if I met him last year at the Cosmos get-together. Um, uh, osmosis and stuff like that, you know, team. Um, oh. Yeah. That was that was a fun time. I uh, got to meet uh, Aaron the Cyborg. <laughs> Aaron the Cyborg. Yeah. Oh shit! Is that the astro- astrology girl? You talking about that girl? I think so. I think she does, but she was working BD a little bit for Cosmos and stuff like that. And well, for and maybe never. Yeah. In the ecosystem and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about somebody else, but I pinned a I pinned a tweet to the NASA if you're interested in yeah. attending the event. Um, did you go to Columbia for Cosmoverse in Medellin? I did not. I was in Vegas. Oh I was in Vegas for Web Three Expo. Um, yeah. So yeah. Fuck! It was so crazy, bro. Oh my god! It was so fucking nuts. I've never been to such a such a oh, beautiful fucking place in the world, like Medellin. It's so awesome. Beautiful, beautiful place. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think I'll. I don't know, man. I, I think I, uh, I, I want to go to Denver, but it's like not. It's not gonna be too. The weather. The weather's gonna be pretty fucking cold over there, right? No, it actually. It's, it's cold over there right now. It's it's cold. It was cold yesterday. Not too cold today. Um, and it's supposed to warm up as the week. Uh, goes on all the way. So, yeah. Let me check the weather. Are you chilling at the hotel right now? Uh, yeah, I got an Airbnb about five minutes away. So, Sick. yeah. Because it's going to be here for oh, like gross. two weeks. 
Damn, it was nice today, actually. Mm. And it's going to be nice tomorrow. Good. Lucky, lucky. Yeah. Uh, so what's uh, one of the other big um, – um, let's see here. Um, uh, events you went to last year. I just went to a couple – I just went to uh, Cosmos in Columbia, Medellin, and then I went to uh, uh, Decentral in Austin, Texas. I was there. You know, Decentral is more of like a. You were there? Yep. I was there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. And yeah. then went... that was my first crypto conference, Decentral. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm going to De- Decentral on the second here. The second of March. In Denver? Yeah. What? They're doing one in Denver? Uh, really? Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, yeah, and I was just at Decentral Miami. I think it was like at the end of... It was either like the 30th of November, I think. I only got to go to one day of it because I had to go... There was like five conferences in a row, and some of them were overlapping days. So I'd only get to go to like one conference a day. Holy smokes. So you do a lot of traveling. Is that is this all you do? Is uh are you in Web3 full time? Yep. Uh do a lot, Damn. A lot, of, a lot of marketing different projects. Um a lot of one offs and help out with large marketing plans. Um that seems to be my forte that I I got sort of pegged into, but help with anything from A to Z. Um from from funding, pitch decks, teaching projects how to pitch, tokenomics later in game, uh, tech connections, dev shops, um, uh, design shops, um, you know, introductions of VCs and VC DAOs, DAO formation, legal tooling and structures, and uh, a little bit of everything in between. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You don't ever get bored of it, dude. You, you enjoy it? I love it. It's I love it. <laughs> So this is one of those things to where um, you can't really get tired of it because um, knowing where it's at right now and where it's going to be, you get mm-hmm. to sort of see like little little spots of how you know how it's not about bringing the next billion people on. It's about making it so that people don't necessarily need to know that they're on it yeah. and the the you know, the financial piece of it is, is awesome. What that really sort of teaches is, you know, ownership of like having, having your money in your front left pocket and no one being able to tell you who that you can give that money to. But it comes, it comes to more than just money. It's just data, you know, whether it's data, you know, of ones and zeros with a dollar sign in front of it, or it's your personal information. Um, Personal information and data ownership is one of my favorite pieces. So, like true DID, uh, DID pieces um, are pretty awesome. Um, I it's it's really interesting how much people kick back on this stuff, but then um, how much it's getting integrated. Like uh, I've done a, a couple interviews with Snap Brilla. They're sort of like a f- on-chain version of Fiverr. And they're partnering with LinkedIn, which is going to be giving like DID certificates for like know your devs, almost KYDs. And so it's a pretty amazing piece. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, where, where, where do you think NFTs are heading this year, man? Um, beyond the JPEG, you know, well, what's the most uh, craziest utility that you see out there for, for NFTs? Since you, you know, you spend a lot of time in, um, in the field. Both member private mem- memberships, you know, membership cards and marketing, um, IRL, you know, virtual pickups uh, of NFTs. So like you can pick up, you know, POAPs are, are making a huge, huge piece. Um, but I think real estate is going to be one of the big game changers. Um, talking with a project out of New York where they want to aggregate the entire uh, – the MLS 
a directory as individual a NFTs so that data for houses can be aggregated. So each property is its own NFT. And then, you know, through a KYC, some sort of KYC process, owners will be able to own their NFT. And so that data that people just sort of data scrape uh, can be better aggregated and filtered, but people then get paid for the ownership, the ownership of their data, of their property. I think that's going to be a really interesting piece. Um, but what I really think is going to be fun to see will be as more books come up, come, get onto blockchain. So almost decent, you know, on-chain storage is cool. It's not necessarily necessary, but um, decentralized, non-censored um, textbooks. So you can, if, if revisions happen, you can see where those revisions are. But I think that would be another cool piece too. Storage, huh? decentralized, decentralized storage. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, cool shit. Yeah, I got to meet uh, so. Uh, friends with this gentleman named Sean who started up Good Blocks, um, a decentralized storage piece. Um, and then I know some of the team over at Ort. Um, both are really, really have cool solutions for decentralized storage. Some, you know, part on chain, part off chain. Um, but the question always comes down to uh, cheap, uh, good, and secure. And you can only have two of those options. And so finding a bridge that brings out both of those or as many of those as possible will be uh, those, those will be the cool breakthroughs, but really the things that we think are going to be cool right now, they're not, we're not even going to be able to think of what, what, what cool comes out. <laughs> I know. Like, I mean, for me, I, I just been like more interested in NFTs just because they're fun. Right. And the community yeah. is like all, oh, I'll hype for NFTs. So recently I've been, I've just been, you know, checking out stuff on Polygon. And I've seen this fucking, like, horse-looking NFT. And I'm like, what's this one all about? And it's literally, like, a horse racing game. And oh, they sad. Spent, it's called, it's called the Zerby, or Derby Stars? Derby Stars? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Zed run as, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So some cool shit like that, man, is what's going to get these, like, younger cats to start getting into crypto, right? Like, one one friend tells the other one, and the other friend tells the other one. It's, yeah. Oh. So one of the, one of the, my favorite things to do, so as I travel around, um, I, you know, I've gotten a term, people call me, like, the blockchain, you know, uh, the, the a Jeho blockchain version of a Jehovah Witness, because it's like, I'm at a gas station and someone's like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, have you heard the good word about blockchain? And then I usually onboard them in some way, you know, um, uh, a lot of DeFi maxis. And I consider myself a DeFi maxi or, or a D-maxi just on the decentralization part. I, st I start people off with the two easiest ways to do it. Coinbase and crypto.com simply because of their learn to earns. They don't have to put any money in from there, you know. If they're already in, in DeFi a little bit, you know, get them into like a wallet, throw, give them a, like I buy a bunch of rug pull NFTs cause they're super cheap and send people their first NFT for free. You know, love doing that on Solana. Nice. You know? Nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I, oh my God. Sending them rug pull NFTs. Oh. <laughs> and, well, and I tell them, I'm like, Hey, this project like is dead. You know, like it, it ran its course. It's not worth anything, but it's a cool picture, you know, and it's and it's yours. Hey, and you never know. Um, one of the things that sort of came up last year started to be, uh, you know, in, in a couple of VCs I do work for started asking me to look, you know, bring them NFT projects that have had rug pulls because the what they're starting to do is take in what, you know, corporate America already knows is that a customer base is this most is its most valuable asset so if a community has already been built uh you don't and they don't have to pay for that and it's a, they just have to buy the tech and fulfill the promises made it's gonna cut it's it's a quarter of the cost 
that makes sense. That makes sense. But as someone that has been rugged before, it would be very hard to regain trust from anybody that tries to like take over the project, unless if I know the people, right? But hey, yeah. hey, more power to them. And there's there are like there are um, NFT projects that have rugged in our community that mm-hmm. actually still have like a little treasury built up, like the Metarabs. I think last time I heard yeah. they had like forty two grand just sitting in their treasury in a DAO or something like that. So yeah. I would see where that would make sense. Yeah, yeah pretty cool. and it, and it's you know what's what sucks, and you know uh, mods uh, always sort of got the shit into the stick. But what was really what it was a huge light through last year was mod how well mods kept communities together, and you know taking over different roles. Um, I was part of a few different projects that got rug pulled. And it was the mods that came back to, to derug it, you know. So that's happening in our yeah. eco too, exactly like that. Like this one called yeah. the uh, Lavana. Is it Lavana? Yeah, Lavana project. Like the moderators are trying to take it over. Yeah. Because yeah. the mods get they they usually learn some of the inner shit that's going on, and uh, it's one of those things where um, it's always good to to sort of see. Um, that stuff coming up. Oh, by the way, I, w- I wanted to ask you this question. Um, yeah. Is there are there any NFT projects that are actually using like AI, like in any shape, way, or form? Like, not like you know the ones that claim to, but like actually ones that you've seen that you know firsthand. They're actually using AI. There are two that I know of off the top of my head. Or, uh, three, three, three that I know. One is Dark Virus on Solana. Um, they're using it for like a, this generative black virus looking uh, piece. It's, it's sort of cool. Um, there's this other one on Cardano doing um, art pieces that uh, I don't remember the ins and outs of it, but it, it was an art piece all done by AI. Um, and then there's this, uh, oh my gosh, no, I, four. There's this one out of Miami, this project where um, basically um, it's the life and death death of an AI um, where it creates both real life art at the same time that it's creating then that art, uh, the art on chain, uh, on chain. So there's only, I think they're doing like them runs of like 750. So basically once that, that, uh, machine that, that's being ran by the AI uh, create 750 pieces. The AI basically dies. <laughs> this is a you know? this is an NFT project, right? Obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's there's this other project called. Oh my gosh. Um, it's two brothers out of New York. Um. The like AI uh, Delphi. Originally, they were they were creating their own um, basic. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting my terminology? AI terminology. They were creating their own uh, modals that creating generative uh, uh, art, and so originally they they did uh, the Book of Revelations. Um, each verse as uh, as its own piece, creating a whole bunch of cool art. But then what they did was what they were going to be doing was you mint an NFT that um, is within their generative art project through their D app. Once you set, you know your the 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 terms to you know the settings to how you want it to be because getting those right sometimes so. You get a piece of pic. You get a you get a picture, the the same way basically every time you put in a picture to get it turned in by AI. Those get once you lock those in, they get sort of they get the metadata gets used to the NFT, and then if people like your art style, they can mint uh, derivatives based off of your NFT art style, and you get a part of that profit piece if if those sell. Send me if you have the information on that project. If you remember, send me it. Send yeah. me it, man, because I think I'm kind of interested in that. I will. Yeah. Um, 
they really good guys. The two issues that that they had is like they were like first piece, you know, had a had a marketing meeting with them, and it was like, so not everyone's gonna get this or, or is smart enough to get this, and then they like broke it down like what their and I was like, uh, okay, rule number one. Never tell people that they're too stupid to understand what you're saying. Everyone will stop listening to you. It doesn't matter how smart they are. Um, you're, 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 and then I was like, what you're saying is that basically you're creating someone that can make an art code project and that art uh, style can be passed down and everyone can, can benefit from that. That's all you're pretty much saying. And they're like, oh yeah, you do get it. And I'm like, yeah, it's not hard. Um, but you're making it overcomplicated. And then they're like, yeah, but we just started our mint and we did a stealth mint because that was sort of like the cool thing at the, at the time. And they're like, no, we've got only like five mints. And I think like two of them were my mom. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that is awesome that your mom is supporting you, but you have 23 Twitter followers. Why do stealth mint? They're like, well, that's like whatever. I'm like, mm, you've never heard understand how it works. Huh? Yeah. And I'm like, the projects at Stealth Mint have like 12,000 followers and then they just randomly post Mint, you know? They don't uh, <laughs> just like put up a website and hope people find it. That's pretty stealthy. Oh, but they're good really good, you know? But it, it was just, um, yeah. Um, I, I'm really interested to see a, a, lot of, a lot of decentralized indexing of websites start to take off um, so that... Uh, tracking is done versus time rather than clicks because time is our most valuable asset. Um, Koi uh, has some cool stuff with that. Um, and, and that's just adding multiple lines of uh, a couple lines of JavaScript to websites and people are rewarded for one, the time they spend because they're aggregating that data as real data. And then projects are rewarded because they're providing valuable data that people spend time on. So that's going to be interesting to see different projects like that because that takes uh, bat to a whole nother level. That's really exciting. And then um, what uh, people, you know, within like the, the play, play, uh, play and win or win to earn categories, um, you know, implement like SDKs from like nodal, um, or coin XYO to earn passive income while playing a game that can help sort of like retain players to earn without having to become a Ponzi scheme by relying on new players to join to be able to reward the, the older players. So as those tokenomics move out, that'll be really interesting as well. Really hoping there's some clear regulation comes out this this year as well. Oh man, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hit you up for a list of like your your top picks or your like you know like um riskier investments, but also could potentially like do something or just like yeah. I, I gotta um, I gotta get a list. I gotta yeah. get a list. You gotta get a list. Uh, let's see here. Um, top five that I'll go through. Um, I'm gonna leave Bitcoin and Ethereum off that list just because they are standards. Um, but, uh, and I'll go over each one of these, but I would say like Solana, um, Optimism, uh, Polkadot, um, Glimmer, and I'm tied between Phantom and Glimmer. Never heard of Glimmer, bro. I don't think I've ever heard of Glimmer. Glimmer is Glimmer is the gas layer from Moonbeam. Moonbeam is the first mainnet parachain uh, para of polka dot. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe H Cardano or Hedera. I, I'm gonna go with Hedera. Um, you know, Polygon I think is gonna do some cool stuff, but I think where the biggest breakout might be will be on Solana as they start to implement the tech that you know is signing over because I know Helium is moving over officially. Um, decentralized cell phone service. I, I'm going to give that, I, I think by like Q3, that will be some really interesting stuff. Um, Pollen is providing decentralized cell phone service um, via NFTs. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. 
just curious. Um, did you you didn't lose any faith during that whole like collapse with FTX and stuff because you know they were heavily invested in Solana. You didn't lose yeah. any faith, yeah. No, uh, FTX. Then then if uh, FTX fucked everyone, plain and simple. And so just because if anything they they put their money in spots to where they felt that they could get the best returns to try to make back money that they were already pocketing on the sides um and so uh if if you're yes they 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 were super head leveraged in Solana but then you'd have to then sort of wonder do you lose faith in everything that they put money in? Now, right. FTX was, was a chain and token killer. Um, I didn't, I didn't see them as a Ponzi. I didn't see them as a scheme. I just saw them as a bad actor. Um, you know, and I didn't use them. Um, but what they really, like, what that kid did is he did more harm to the entire ecosystem than any scammer could do because um you know look at how how far he he touched um everything from politicians to you know saving other projects and 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 protocols um you would then have to think that everything they touched was tainted um and i really don't believe that everything they touched was tainted but i think i think that that taint um rubbed off and and they're used as sort of the the central focal point of like of scams, and yet people went out of their way to to um, point out that they were a scam. Yet the SEC and other regulatory agencies did nothing. So it shows a much deeper issue, which um, you know. Yeah. Did you ever Tell meet this mark. fucker? Did you ever meet Sam in person? Um, I was in. I was. I tried to. I was supposed to meet him um, during the LA Blockchain Summit. I was in the wrong speaker room. I w- I was at the wrong stage. I was like, wait, Sam's supposed to be talking now, and uh, um. And then I, I was I was like, oh yeah, no, there's this big room on the other side, and uh, I was like, oh, that's where he was talking. Um, so I, I missed that um, because it was just like, and this, that was before shit went down. Um, but I had some questions for him about some like tokens that they heavily invested in, and then they basically killed and shelved. Um, and I and so one of those uh, dream killer platforms, but. It was sort of hilarious in December when I was in Miami, I was going through Telegram and I found a chat that was from May, I think, May or June. And the last piece of it was someone was asking me what centralized exchanges I liked and why. And I basically said, you know, uh, you know, Mexi, L Bank, um, uh, KuCoin. Uh, Coinbase and Crypto.com were the were the main piece, main main ones, and I was like, I just never touched Kraken, never got into it, so I didn't want to, you know, didn't need to, um, and a few other reasons. And this guy was like, well, FTX, and he's like, and I'm like, yeah, no, fuck SBF, they're a chain killer and they're innovative killer, um, and they price model pieces out, you know, because they set coin prices and they literally just kill things that, that way. I wasn't even thinking of it in nefarious aspects of it other than just killing competition. And he's like, yeah, well I'm going where the deepest liquidity is. And like posted some like little graphic artist graphic piece of like liquidity uh, pools for different. um, And so this was the first time I got back into this chat since then. So that was like the first, you know, message in telegram there. And I literally responded with like, this didn't age well, did it? They, uh, he didn't like that. Damn dude. Damn, man. So going back to like when you were speaking about marketing and helping people market their their uh, projects, right? What are the first yeah. things that you recommend a new NFT project to do? 
Um, one. And let's 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 just say this. Let's just say this too, because this is this might this might be helpful, right? Let's say they already have the art done. Um, mm -hmm. They're ready to launch a collection on, let's just say, Solana or Polygon mm -hmm. or Cosmos. You know, mm -hmm. what should the what should the project do to make sure they get a good runway? Um, guerrilla marketing um, and a shit ton of Twitter. And there, there's there's a couple different um, social media sites that are really key on SEO that sort of tie together to go after. You know, one definitely stay away from any bots. I'd rather, you know, most, most communities would rather see, a, you know, 700 deep with, you know, 500 active, you know, semi-active talkers versus 12,000 deep and seeing only 70 talkers. Um, you know, they shouldn't have to buy their, buy their, buy their, their followers with incentives 24 seven because, you know, they might need that. Um, but marketing plans for both getting consumer interest and staying in touch and constant communication. Twitter spaces is one of the biggest things we have right now. Um, a, a few other different social media websites, um, you know, from medium to LinkedIn to, uh, favor and YouTube all sort of help twist, uh, and even Instagram, believe it or not. So trying to manage all of that, um, is just because a lot of it is updates and sharing um, a little bit of up, you know, what's going on or behind the scenes. Um, I, I love helping projects with AMAs um, and interviews because it sort of um, it humanizes them in a in a in a doxed world or un whether they're doxed or undoxed. Um, and it's one of those things to where uh, people can be. You know, there was uh, there was a phase where being doxxed was was supposed to be the new thing, and then I, I I saw more scammers that were doxxed than than undoxxed for that period because people thought like, oh, I can do whatever the heck I want now. No, um, it's consistency and transparency. So, yeah, the fundamentals of blockchain. Yeah, I don't know, man. Me when I when I look at a project and uh, you know I see people with like the, for example, there's a project in Cosmos, right? And they're they're making this like new chain and stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, all their PFPs are yeah PFPs on their website. And they're all like NFTs. It's like I always get a weird icky feeling when I see that. Like you're building a chain, you're onboarding new people to use your chain. you people are spending tons of money on spinning up validators for your chain. The least you could do is just like fucking dox yourself on your website on your own website but no they they, they decide not to just kind of get an icky feeling when people do that you know well so there's there's two pieces to that did they just pop up out of nowhere you know like uh do you use the multi-chain bridge uh, used to any used to be called any swap but now it's multi-chain mm -mm. no 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 it used to it used to be a big bridge um, it's still a big bridge. There's only ever been one hack on it, um, for roughly like, I think it was like 3 million due to like an NFT exploit somehow within two weeks, everyone was complete that, that got affected by it. It was everyone, it was fixed and everyone was, uh, was made whole again. Um, now, and then you have projects like Nomad where everyone is doxxed, but now they, 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 I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. I see. I, I called that, um, to our team and, um, I, I was one of the, uh, whistleblower, so, you were a whistleblower. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but not only that, I, I pulled a really bad teammate move. And I've I've apologized to my team since then. While that hack was going on, um, you know, I was doing I was doing DGen stuff on on one computer um, around that hack. Um, but then on you know uh, on Slack, I I did one of the worst teammate moves ever. Um, 
I, uh, you know, pinned, pin messaged all, all my little huge rants about how bad the code is and there's an exploit in it and we're going to lose everything. And I like pinned them together and I was like, I hate to tell you, I told you so, but I told you so. Ooh. And, and that was, that was one of the worst, uh, I, I will be honest, but I was so frustrated because I saw that coming. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things where my my name is Taco. I go by well, my name is Player One Taco, but I just go by Taco. You know, everyone knows me. You know, but if I gave you the name Steve Smith, you wouldn't be able to find a single thing on me. And so, you know, would you rather, you know? And I show my I'm I'm at all the events. I do live videos. You know. I even turned my face into an NFT. The only reason why I don't change my PFP on Twitter is simply because one, I'm not going to change it for a project that, you know, I'm just like with for a little bit. I might, you know, if they do a background on my PFP, I might change that, but that is what everyone knows me by. So why would I change what everyone knows me by? Because then it might, people might be like, Oh, what's wrong? Cause I've never been one of those like guys that like change their PFP like every three days and nothing against those that do, but that's part of that consistency piece, yep. you know? Yep. It's your brand, bro. Let's just put it that way. Exactly. It's your, it's yeah. your identity, your, your online identity. It's your brand. And if mm -hmm. it's sticky, it sticks, you know, and you, and you just, yeah. just go with it. Yep. Yeah, definitely. You know? And so, um, I just, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't necessarily have a thing against docs or undocs people. It's the, it's the consistency and transparency. Um, what, are, what are they, what are they doing in the meantime? But uh, yeah, no, sometimes right now, one of the biggest things a, a, new, a new NFT project can do, um, not only host spaces regularly, but go to other spaces, whether it's shill spaces, whether it's community spaces, and, and get up there and talk, put their hand up, you know, there's, there's big platforms where, you know, there'll be, everyone's just waiting their turn to shill, you know, but part of that consistency part is by continuously showing up, you know, being part of, even if it's not a shill space, everyone has an opinion, go throw your two guay in, you know, what is it that you see coming up out of blockchain? What are you interested in? What is your What are your thoughts on what the conversation is? One of the worst things a, a project or person can do is join a space, you know, and say, "Hey, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to talk about this," rather than just waiting a second, you know, or like ask, like, "Hey, you guys, I heard you talking about this. What exactly was it you were talking about?" You know, because this is my thoughts on what I thought you were saying, but clarifying that you know, that participation piece is one of the hugest things people can do. Absolutely. I've been doing that uh, lately where I just jumped into like uh, random spaces uh, that are obviously like crypto related, right? Mm -hmm. And also new, new people that start hosting spaces that I, you know, generally don't like hang out with too many times. Just jump in there and say hi and, and just, just listen. But I agree. I agree. I, I don't like to do the shilling thing though with our project unless if somebody asks like, "Hey, what's that PFP you got?" Or if it's something that's super related to what I'm what I'm doing. Okay, then I'll I'll talk about it. But I don't I don't like the whole shilling and pushing people too much on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I totally understand that. Um. Yeah. No. So what is it? So then I guess that that then opens it up. Uh, what is uh? What is the squid? Tell me about the squid. Well, the squid is just a squid, sir. It's just a PFP, really, that I uh, <laughs> that I love. Nah, it isn't, okay. nah, it's a collection on Stargaze um, in the, the Cosmos Ecosystem Project. Uh, One thousand unique little squids, and the way we're the way we're like making it interesting is we run a we run a ton of validator nodes in the ecosystem. So we do so we do snapshots here and there, and we just airdrop people some tokens, um, you know, just to give back a little. And also, we collaborate with other artists that are not necessarily like big blue chips, but also like the smaller people in Cosmos that are, you know, trying to trying to make it. And we collaborate with them, 
Yeah, so all of the, all the squid holders that have at least three squids in their wallets, we take a snapshot and we'll we'll, we'll airdrop some like free NFTs that you know we we partner up with people. So and that's we just started the project actually. It's not that old, just a couple months old. So we're just we're just getting the ball rolling. Nice. Um, are you guys going to be at any events? Actually, uh, yeah, Shroot, Shroot the, uh, my, my partner with Cosmos Spaces, he's the one that started the NFT project for us, and uh, he's going to be there on Thursday. He'll be there on Thursday, hanging out with all the Cosmos people and stuff, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I'd love to uh, connect us. I'd love, love to meet him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so uh, another cool thing about NFTs that I see coming out uh, is through a project Clopper that I'm, I'm starting to work with um, NFTs that own NFTs. NFTs that own NFTs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, cause the idea is wouldn't it bring more value to that, that first NFT if it owned other NFTs that might, might have IP or other pieces to it. Uh, <laughs> You mean like kind of like a little pyramid, right? Like you, you, you're mm-hmm. at the top, and then you. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Like, like for me, dude. Like, um, I, I try to stay away of like the mentality of okay, we have this collection. Now it's time to make another one. Okay, shoot, let's go make another one, and then another one. I want to make the first one like the best one. You know, the first one it's gonna be the best one, and then you know, I I don't really like I don't really like when uh, creators oh. like. You know? No, this isn't this is so this isn't this is almost cross project. So like let's say you had any ETH project NFT. I'm gonna just go with call it Project X. Um and it's you know you know it it's a mid tier NFT. The floor's price is staying at around fifty bucks or so. So the idea behind it is if they go drink that that NFT goes and drinks an NFT potion, uh, a story potion that that project X NFT now owns a story. So it's different. And it, the, the story has the metadata that it's owned by that X NFT. Whoa, so okay. it's almost, yeah. So it's not like it's not a second run or, or, or third run or fourth run run from a from a, the same nft project it's uh you know so the idea behind it you know is wouldn't it make it more rare if that nft owned other nfts interesting okay all right you, have you seen what blur is doing and have you seen what fucking nftx is doing yep i've seen the yeah. blur um um i've sort of stayed off of, i've stayed off of it just because um I like creator fees. I like royalties, you know, and uh, I, I think, you know, uh, I, I used to be more of an NFT trader. Nowadays, I like to just hold NFTs until they're rocks. Um, but, uh, you know, I think if I'm go- when I was, when I was, when I was flipping NFTs, I was making money. I think that because I was making money, I wasn't. I did. I wasn't tithing. Looking at look at it as tithing in a way, you know. From you know, uh, you know, I'm supporting the project that's helping me make money. Uh, I so that's sort of why I believe in royalties and creator fees. Right. You know. So, I think it's amazing. I think it's cool. It should be freedom of choice, but a project should also have that choice to be able to have that hard coded in and it should be respected, you know, unless it's a P2P, um, you know, system. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if anything, I think, uh, what would be cool is if like a EIP came into place that once an NFT earns a certain amount, that NFT, you know, like in creator fees or royalties that the fee starts going down. Gotcha. Like a sun, a, a sunset like a creator. Fee. Yeah, yeah. Like it'll taper, it'll taper off. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. But, but I also believe, you know, um, 
I think when it comes to like art and like straight straight art and music that uh, you know artists have been getting the short end of the stick for since the beginning of time you know the the in the music industry I get the one of the running jokes is the drummer gets paid last you know the man at the door gets paid first so Mm-hmm. I'm just sort of, you know, where music, where it comes into play with music, I think uh, both uh, NFT for ticketing events will become a piece, as it already sort of is. I think as more integrations are done to where it's seamless, to where people don't even know that they're on, they don't need to know they're on blockchain. You know, blockchain just provides that sec- that secure level to it of, of proof of ownership, the infrastructure behind it. So it comes down to the user interface. How easy is it to use? Yep, I think data is super important. We um we started uh, doing some of these like uh, proof of participation NFTs. Every time somebody comes to our spaces, uh, we'll we'll do like a little like informative video that they have to do a little quiz, and then they get a you know a pop NFT. And yeah. I think I, I think it's very important because the more and more you you give these out, the more and more data you collect. How many people are holding what in their wallets? You know, not just the actual badge NFT that you're giving them, but what else are they holding? What else are they doing? How many tokens do they have? Like, not not saying we'd like to invade people's privacy, but it, all that data helps you, like, you know, strategize. Okay, Custom what tailor. can we do? What can we do with this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so I uh, like we we do or do we do data collection piece like that too, like, and, and I I help projects do personalized data collection, you know, where users want to give up information, not necessarily out of incentivization, but like, you ask for a wallet address, most people give you their wallet address or they give you their burner, you know, and so you've been able to see what tokens that that wallet has had or hold. So you know what interests them. And so if you can see what LP tokens they have and you can offer a comparative, you know, oh, you like token X and token Y pool? Well, we offer that pool too, uh, you know, uh, maybe at a higher yield, you know? So competitive, it's, it's true comparison shopping for the user rather than them not knowing about what's out there. Um, two th- you know, one thing that happened last year was uh, courts were uh, approved, approved uh, NFTs to be used to serve uh, subpoenas and cease and desist letters. Um, I think it was uh, Brazil just had uh, um, a court trial in the metaverse. So that... There, it's 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 amazing stuff of where we're going. What uh we need to watch out for is um you know not to sound too tin hatty, but regulations that are coming out to just punish rather than to allow rules to be built for people to build in. Um, I I uh, I saw it the other di- did I see it today or yesterday? Um. So the SEC is filing charges finally against Duquan, um, saying that, you know, Tara, uh, uh, Tara mm-hmm. and Luna securities. And what's really horrible is he's because he, you know, people consider, you know, Gary feels that everyone considers Duquan such a bad guy that no one's going to come, you know, and defend. And so uh, making broad, you know, assumptions and putting almost all of crypto as um, a, a, a security in their allegations. And so basically it's one of those things where super smart, you know, if you're going to be able to make regu- precedent based off of someone that, you know, a case that's a slam dunk almost that no one's going to defend and make huge pieces of regulation around that. Um, then really people have to, you know, go to the defense of Duquan um, just so that, 
no, everyone else doesn't get punished for that, which is sort of horrible. Um, diabolical on the fa- on on the half of the SEC, you know. But they're not. A, that's the biggest part. These people are not. The regulations, yeah. government is not as dumb as people think they are. This is a game that they've been playing for a long time. They just don't know necessarily how to control it yet, and that's where, um, or the people that that are in power over that don't know how to really truly control it, and so they don't make regulation. They just punish because regulation would allow people to know what they could do in it, and uh, yeah, this shit's crazy, bro. If you really think about it, like it's it's kind of almost like uncontrollable at this point. It's it's just taken over. Like, you can regulate the shit out of it, but people are still going to fucking use it. I mean, how can you stop the the Bitcoin network, bro? You can't. How the fuck yeah. are they going to stop it? They just can't. The Bitcoin network will stop itself for the simple fact that it couldn't, it can't handle the amount of transactions that need to be handled on it, you know? And the fact that, you know, you can't send your friend $5 without it costing you $25 is one of bitcoin's biggest flaws Mm -hmm. you know um and you're right no uh but you know with proof of stake systems like ethereum now um what proof of stake has done is centralized um control the idea was that more people would become uh stakers and have you know control of the network but in reality projects people have projects and in, have incentivized staking with them so that proof of stake now um is control you know yep 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 and we see that all the time in cosmos to be honest yeah well, I don't, how do you view okay so you must spend a fuck load of time on, oh sorry your, your tv's a little loud bro uh and that is that is super that's on the other side of the house downstairs so um, yeah, what kind of headphones you got or mic? Uh, I'm using my JBL 660s. No wonder you use the same ones as our Fuddy Robo, bro. His mic is always loud as fuck. <laughs> I apologize for that. I yeah, no. You, as, as someone, you don't spend a fuckload of time in Cosmos, right, bro? No, not as much as I wish okay. I did. Um, I wish I had. I had sent. I had. Uh, Somewhere I had some osmosis, some doing some stuff, and uh, I think I sold it to buy some NFTs. Awesome, um, because, good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, you know I used Axlar to uh, go from uh, Cosmos to uh, uh, Moonbeam. Beautiful, beautiful. I just asked that question. I'm not here to show Cosmos. Believe me, I do not even want to show you Cosmos. I want to ask you, uh, what have you heard about, like, what's expected in Cosmos? What's the next biggest thing for Cosmos as someone who doesn't spend a lot of time in Cosmos? The next biggest heard? thing? Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, security as a service is a rentable service for infrastructure layer chains. Um, let's see here. Um, one of the things that I always disliked about Cosmos and Osmosis was the UI transferability of the step throughs of what you're supposed to do to get to Osmosis. It's one of those things to where when it clicks, it clicks. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do this, this and this. But the fact that, you know, you have to learn there's just and go through the steps. It's it's not so easy. And even on in Cos- like when I first started integrating into Cosmos by myself before I even knew anyone in Cosmos, even back then there was like no like true how to videos. And I was like, okay, I know how to do this stuff, but this is super dumb. And I literally had to call someone up. I'm like, all right, I'm about to just be like, they don't want me on their chain. That's what it is. You know? And then he's (laughs) like, Oh yeah, no, you have to click the three dots to transfer it over into osmosis and i was like oh it doesn't say that there it's just three dots and it has and he's like yeah i know it's horrible (laughs) um you know and so um the big piece of decentralization is, is really cool on it um 
one of the things I really disliked last year was the what was it the was it the Juno whale that had his funds confiscated by the Dow uh, through vote. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, cool. Power to the people, but taking people's funds away from them because they have more than you, not cool. Um, sort of like that piece that's going on right now with MakerDAO. They were sort of ordered by a court to upgrade their code to steal funds from a hacker. That's some big boy shit that, that almost got me out of Ethereum back when the DAO first got hacked and, you know, because someone was dumb and gave away their keys or something. I don't remember the whole story. Uh, there was a made up story of why they lost their funds, but it was like, Oh, so someone just had their funds stolen and you're playing big boy. And so you're going to fork. I don't see you forking every time everyone else gets their, their funds stolen. You just say, <laughs> not your keys, not your crypto. Yep. Should have done your own research, you know? Yep. Yep. But when your own inside people do it, oh, let's just fork the chain. So that's yep. stuff like that makes me, you know, um, makes me grateful that there's projects out there that are doing, you know, trying to follow first principles. And, I understand, you know, having an upgradable chain really is cool because you never know how ch- you need to be, you can't future proof against everything. So yes, upgrades need to the chain need to happen um, to be able to, I don't know what your first computer looked like. My first computer um, was super cool because not only did it have a, uh, a five inch floppy it had a three and a half inch hard disk floppy drive and i had a breakout 4x cd rom drive all right Hell yeah so that was my first computer um and if i tried to bring that computer into today yeah no um my aol i don't think would even start up so damn being able to upgrade a chain because you never know what it's going to need, um, you know, is, is great. So then that way you don't have a, you know, like, Oh, okay, well this chain isn't big enough anymore. So we need to move to, we need to make a new chain. So being able to upgrade a chain um, is pretty amazing, especially as new computer languages continuously get, get made. Um, you know, it, it's, Rust is, is sort of cool. Um, I wish Haskell was uh, a lot more user-friendly. And I'm a huge Python nerd. And that is why, I, you know, I quit coding was because uh, Solidity became the norm, the standard rather than Viper. And uh, no one writes in tool. So I was like, yeah, that's dumb. Um, but what comes out of it is, is amazing. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, no. Uh, and then I, I, I'm friends with, uh, uh, what is it? Humanity protocol, um, on osmosis, uh, out of like, uh, Serbia. So yeah. Hmm. Well, going back to the question, I think, um, I think, yeah. So the, the information that's being passed around about, what to expect in 2023 for Cosmos. Like that shared security is just bullshit. You know, Um, they basically, basically like shared security, it'll work. But to a certain point, like validators are going to get fucking slashed up the ass. If uh, something happens when they start losing or not confirming blocks and they have to like use shared security to secure another, another chain. Like, if they miss a few blocks, and that validator gets slashed, bro. Like, that whole thing about shared security is not going to really work. So there's yeah. not too much to, like, expect about Cosmos right now. Um, that's why I'm, like, looking into other chains. I'm trying to expand on Polkadot. Polkadot and Solana. Polkadot and Solana. Um, the DGen play right now, this is, this is straight DGen play, um, is Zen. XEN. Um, you can find it on uh, faircrypto.org. That that will take you to like the white paper and, and everything like there. It's a token across 10 chains. Um, 
with NFTs on four chains. Um, and uh, they just launched a dev net um, and they launching a test net in like Q, end of Q2, Q3 with uh, main net going live, hopefully in like February of next year. Um, but, uh, Z-E-N, Horizon? No, X-E-N. My bad, X-E-N. No. Uh, Yep, XEN, but crashed Polygon, you know, with their NFTs because it, uh, you know, they just, you know, tested out and, and pushed Phantom to the max. So some cool stuff there, but X E N, yeah, X X Z N, right? X E N, X E N. Okay, that yep. one. Um, there's like a fuck ton on fucking uh, crypto.com. Um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, here, I will post them up. Um, Zen underscore. And, and Taco, don't get, don't get me wrong. Like, um, maybe, yeah, Cosmos is, is not doing that great right now, but there's a ton of projects in, in the Cosmos ecosystem that, that I do have like plenty of faith for, you know? Um, oh. I have plenty of faith for Stargaze, the NFT marketplace for all of Cosmos, basically. Um, I have I've had faith for Juno. I think Juno's pretty fucking cool. So there's, yeah. there are a couple, you know. I'm not giving up yet. Not giving up. No, definitely. I understand that. So here is... Um, that's sort of on their NFTs for on Phantom Chain. Um, okay. Uh, founder is Jack Levin, uh, Google employee number 21. Um, and, uh, they're doing some, some crazy things. Shout out to Alpha City. I see you in the, I see you in the crowd. Um, hope, uh, hope that is all good. Don't know if that is, uh, MA or not, but if it is MA, shout out to you in Vegas. Hope all is well. But no, Lil, um, that is, Zen is uh, one of the big things right there. Um, sort of, you know, no admin keys, no pre-mind. Um, and uh, one, token price is set, was set by uh, people, not by, you know, anyone else because there was no pre-mind tokens. No VCs, and, uh, no big VCs? Not a single, no. None yet. Um, VCs, VCs are going to be getting our, uh, you know, for the uh, test net and new layer one that they're building. But uh, all tokens in existence came about by just paying gas fee to create, almost like a, a proof of participation uh, token. I'll throw, a couple, I'll throw a couple hundred bucks at it. Who knows? I may do something. I'm not worried about two hundred bucks. You know. Nice yeah. to throw in some money here and there on DGen plays. Um, yeah, check it out because it's you only pay to mint it. You only pay gas fee. You can go to you can go to liquidity pools like Uniswap and buy it. Um, but really, if you're just paying gas fee right now, I think it depends. Uh, you know, the play might be to buy it and then stake it in the liquidity pool. Look at long term. But uh, yeah. Read the white paper on how you can get it. Um, you know, if you're looking at a long play, that might be the way to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do that for sure. I got time to burn tonight. Okay. Yeah, my buddies are in here. They've been listening since we basically got in. Uh, XOXO, Bruce, uh, Crypto Nomad. Pretty cool people. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I definitely I, I sent them the invites to come up. Uh, so they are always welcome up. Um, what else? What else can we talk about, man? What else can we talk about? Something interesting that's happening out there in Denver. Anything let's cool? see. Uh, looking to build out with uh, do some marketing pieces with two different projects. Um, in the buildathon that are working on creating like, um, almost like on-chain credit analytics. Um, so basically, uh, credit worthy of like small, small loan protocols for, uh, wallets 
you know? So that comes into the DID category, which will be amazing. Um, and then... Uh, I got a good one. I got a good one to ask you. I have to ask you this question. Um, uh, carbon credits, on-chain carbon credits. What, what do you think about that shit? Oh, man. So I just was in a space the other day with Carbon Path. Um, and uh, so... One, if it is a true carbon pat, carbon credit, the best the best thing that you can do if you can buy it, uh, burn it. You know, holding it. You know, yeah, it's just one of those things to where if there's a true if it if there's true verifiability of it, um, then uh, yeah, um, I think that the way it's being done isn't isn't the best uh, menthol protocol is pretty cool because they do on-chain uh, analytics of your carbon footprint. Um, but everyone used uh, carbon emissions and electricity usage to say, to ban mining operations in a way uh, for, for crypto. Um, and they, and that, the only reason why that was able to get is because they only did half of an argument. They didn't do the full argument of, of what it was. Um, so you look at Bitcoin mining. One of the easiest things you can see, hash power. Hash power secures the network. Hash power is electricity math that is very, you know exactly how much power is needed to get that computational power. Knowing how much p computational power is needed to get that, that hash, you know the electricity usage of it. So it's very easy to see um, electricity needs. But what people forget is how um, ingenious miners are because they're wanting the least amount, the, the lowest cost of electricity possible. Um, so they never took in, so knowing the cost of electricity and comparing it to where people are, they made it sound like it was this horrible thing, yet so many different mining operations used renewable energies, you know. Um, I have I've, uh, a friend that is starting a, a mining operation company down in Puerto Rico, um, and it's going to be powered all, you know, I think it's 75% of it's going to be powered by renewable energy. Holy shit. But Renewable. Sorry, Bruce. We can't really hear you, Bruce. What? You can hear me? Now we can. Okay, okay, okay. So renewable is more good, right? But in you're cutting out on burning them. Oh shit! You're cutting out. You're you're cutting out, dude. Okay, try now. Now that he muted. Okay. Is this better? Okay, awesome. So re renewable energy sounds good, right? But it's a very, very broad concept. So renewable energy could be cutting down trees and burning them. Uh, oil could also be renewable energy since oil can be created again, but it's just a process that takes a long time, right? So I, the term renewable energy, I'm not a big fan. So it's one of those things to where, one, I agree with you. It, it depends on how that re renewable energy is being used um, or where the source of it is. So if you're going off of simple things like geothermal energy, uh, wind farms, or solar, cool. Nuclear power is the way to go, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, we're, we have so much red tape on that that you can't even – studies can't even be done to show – how safe it can be done or what safety safety procedures need to be in place um, to make it safe. So that sort of sucks. Um, you know, people say it's not safe and you, and you're, you literally cannot conduct, um, you know, figure out how to make it safe. That's sort of stupid, but um, you're right. Renewable energies can be a very wide topic. There's there's a, a project called Sea Sweepers, which is uh, in partnership with the Sea Shepherd fleet. Um, what they're going to be doing in this coming year is scraping uh, 
uh, ocean plastics and repurposing that plastic. And so one of the ideas is putting um, plastic infrastructure. So basically the creation of plastic and where it's sent is tracked on chain for, you know, knowing where the buck ends. Cause you know, part of what we have to do is just clean up and we are so horrible at that, but um, it's going to be really interesting to see how that comes about in the next year, couple of years. Um, you know, energy web token has had a huge rebound this last two months. So they're talking about transferable power. Let's see something like that happen. Yeah, I think with Vitaly about the region network in Cosmos, that basically what they're doing is um, uh, print chains in Cosmos, right? If they want to be a carbon neutral chain, they buy their token. (laughs) They buy all their, they buy a fuckload of these region network tokens. And then they trust the region network team to go out and do these like, um, uh, how how would you describe them, Bruce? What's the best way to describe? Like uh, they they invest in like um, basically like, uh, farms and, and doing that kind of stuff. How would you describe it, Bruce? I'm terrible. Bruce? Oh, shit, I can't hear Bruce. Let me jump back out. I can't. No, I, I can't hear anything either, Bruce. I am what used to be known in America as... Okay, I thought it was, thought it was just me. No. So yeah, no. It, uh, I know a couple other regen projects like that where they buy, you know, they provide, you buy their NFT and the money that they make, uh, you know, they go and buy like an offset for. Um, there's there's Coral Tribe in Solana, which um, they they you know they they do coral restoration in the ocean. Um, one little patch at a time. So that's, that's sort of cool. Um, but, uh, you know, until the entire process from, from start to finish can get, uh, put on chain for that verifiability piece. Um, what I'm, you know, it's sort of hard to see what that next piece could be. Welcome back, Bruce. Have you hey, Bruce. Nothing. Nothing yet. <laughs> it's, okay. it's all right, Bruce. You're having mic issues. No worries. Send in mad love, Bruce, man. So, yeah, no. But uh, that's sort of that's sort of where I see, the, see this uh, this piece going this in this coming up year. Dow tooling. What about Dow tooling? What's the best Dow tooling you've seen in crypto? Who has the best Dow tooling? Um, what do you, in what aspect? Fully decentralized Dow tooling that allows people to create their own Dows, have people multi sigs, manage funds, you know, upstream. 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 Let me check that out. It's even done on a mobile app. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, and you and you can do you can do proposals on chain, um, with actions. Then and then people can also donate into the Dow Treasury. Um, it, a, a really cool no no code solution, uh, as well as community management sort of like piece across between like Instagram and, um. Facebook Live. Okay. Um, what's their Twitter? Is it Join Upstream at Join Upstream? It looks like something like a dolphin, if I remember right. Uh, they might have Let changed their logo. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um. So, what I wanted to say about carbon credits, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. I don't really, I'm not a big fan and I kind of believe it's, it can be used as a big hoax, right? I can see it as being used as a tool to control and manipulate. 
and uh, I'm not against like climate, the whole narrative of climate change or anything. I think, like as you said, we need to clean up the earth, right? And we need to change the way we produce because we are wasting so much energy on stupid, stupid stuff, plastic, whatever, right? But carbon credits, I don't think it's the way to go. So I, I agree with you 100% that green initiatives are a form of control. Um, and it's really easy for the big guy to say, the, tell the little guy to clean up their act when the big guy, but at the same time, the U.S. has already had their industrial revolution. And now they're basically, and, and that's how the U.S. advanced, but now trying to impose restrictions that is uh, forcing other countries to not be able to have their own growing period. That's, that is, that is control at its finest. I think the idea of carbon credits is a way to, to offset some of that stuff is good, but the validity behind it um, and just the system for honesty behind it is, is, not as up to date or where it should be. Um, there's some countries like New Zealand, which, um, you know, from one of, from a friend that I have out there that, you know, sort of broke, looked at like putting together a tree farm for, for carbon credits says that this, you know, the, the state comes out, uh, like once a month for like five years, uh, watching the growth of, of, of part parcels, um, and you have to pay for it the entire time until you hit that five year mark. And then, then it's good for, for its first carbon credit. Um, and I think something like that is, you know, verifiable, you know, I think is one of the things that we can get to do is, um, you know, proof of tree in a way, you know, and almost geospace, you know, uh, a Pokemon go version of, you know, go catch that tree, make sure it's still there. Um, and uh, that's verifiable, you know. Um, you can do geotagging piece. You can do, you know, live action camera piece to it um, and prove that that tree's still there. And it could be in your own little, like, metaverse that doesn't look like anything that it's not. And it could not It could be something other than a tree as it shows up wherever. But that's verifiable data. And I think it, the more we work on, with vi verifiable data, um, it it doesn't have to be believed um, that it is, you know, doing its job. It's just known that it's doing its job, I guess. I like that. I really do want to get it kind of touches into the whole idea or like concept of Bitcoin and crypto, right? Transparency and verifiable data and transactions and the whole ledger. I would like to like touch back to what you mentioned with uh, the responsibility and the control, like with the carbon credits. I agree that the res responsibility is placed on the wrong party. Most of it. As you mentioned, like it's easy for the big guy to tell the small guy you have to do this and this and this, right? Or else you pollute the planet. And in reality, like it's the production side of of the industry that's that's a big part of the problem. And I think the narrative. Yeah. And and when countries say that they they're gonna go completely green by a certain year, that's stupid. In my opinion, um, look, at, uh, look at Sri Lanka. You know, it, it's like, but you know, consistency um, and being able to provide consistent energy to your community. Uh, yes, it's really awesome to have renewables part of that system, but. Um, New York, one of the things that was sort of put out uh, a couple of weeks ago in New York was that, well, so New York has a plan as of right now to be 100% renewable energy by 2040. Um, and Toronto just is, is that way, but they had, with the recent ice storm they had, 
they lost not only power but heat um, and had to get electricity sent to them, you know, re, re-diverted by, from New York um, because they couldn't, they couldn't produce enough electricity for their own city um, because they were, you know, so far on renewables. And when, when Mother Nature um, can take out your power, I, I don't think that that's, that's a service to your, to your community. The, the, the infrastructure for um, renewables is not in place. There's seven generators within the Hoover Dam, um, and only one of them can run at a time because the 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 infrastructure to take electricity that's generated out and put it into the network isn't there. This the network can't hold that much power, so only one out of seven generators are running and producing electricity. Um, out of the Hoover Dam at a time. So why don't we work on infrastructure before we try putting any mandates into place to where we could divert and send power anywhere we need to? I think that's one of the biggest things that, that we need to work on that's a really before good point. tackling other piece, you know? It is, it is a common practice to burn or just spew out the excess energy on the production because the infrastructure can't handle it. It's the same with oil and natural gas and whatever it is. There's always an excess that has just been burned off at site. Yep. Yeah. And so that piece of it is a hard piece to come by. So um, the being able to send that electricity wherever it's needed or store it for later when it is needed um, whether through capacitor systems or, you know, um, charging stations that will then power other things later on. Um, batteries are the, are the future, you know? Most definitely, yeah. It's going to be exciting to see when we get the plasma battery. So many people. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That'll be fun. fun. So. Been a little quiet tonight. Are you at work? Bubble butt. Bubble butt? Yeah, bubble butt's bubble. in here. Just yeah, I'm not working. I'm working. Hold on a second. No worries. No worries, bro. We're just hanging. Man, man, oh man. Guys, so. We went to um, my in-laws' house today, right? And uh, pulling out of their driveway onto the road. And out of nowhere, some dude just starts tailgating, tailgating my ass. Like, bro, like, tailgating my fucking ass. So I sped up, right? Like an asshole. Just, like, sped up just, just to lose a dude. I came to a four-way stop. And the dude, again, like, tailgates me and starts flashing his lights. I'm like, what the fuck? Because I was driving at night. And I turned right. And same thing, like just tailgating, tailgating all the way to the next light and starts following me at this point because he's like taking all the turns that I'm taking. We, um, so I, t- I took a left turn and then I just went straight away and the dude like gets right next to me, rolls down his window and fucking shouting his lungs out, roll down your fucking window, roll down your window and like swerving on the road, bro, like. Like, 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 uh, right side by side next to me. I'm like, what the fuck does this guy want? Like, dude, I didn't even do anything. This dude was just like tailgate, tailgating me. I didn't fucking do jack shit, dude. And the dude's like, pull over, roll down your window right now. I'm like, what the, what the fuck, bro? So like, instead, instead of like, you know, listening to the dude, he was too busy focusing on like me, like trying to roll down my window, and I just like turned right really sharp. And the dude went straight, and I'm like, I went and pulled into my house. I'm like, what the fuck was that all about, bro? Like, people are fucking nuts. What if I rolled on my window? This dude's trying to shoot my ass. Like, fuck that. Crazy, man. Road rage was crazy today. Oh, sounds I'm crazy. glad. I was glad you're okay on that. Sorry, uh-huh. Bruce, go ahead. No worries. It's just an insane squid. 
I was watching videos yesterday of uh, road, road rage in uh, America of people shooting each other from the car on the highway. Yeah, yeah. My wife was like, "Bro, why don't you roll down your window?" I'm like, "You think I'm a, you think I'm gonna fucking roll down my window for someone that I don't even know on the road? Like, what if the dude wants to fucking shoot my ass? Like, and wants you know get a good shot? Like, because my windows are tinted, so you couldn't see me. And like for real, like I didn't do nothing wrong. He was tailgating me." And I sped up, like, to the point where I, like, screeched my tires. I sped up super hard. Like, I was just fucking, just fucking burning rubber. And then he caught all the way up to me and fucking was shouting out his window. Bro, he was, like, literally, like, hanging out his window, shouting at me, like, throwing signs and shit with his hands. And fucking, uh, yeah, I I literally thought, like, when we came to a stoplight, I thought he was going to come out of his car because he was shouting out his fucking window. And, bro, it's, like, 22 degrees out here in, in Michigan. And this dude's going nuts, like, doing this kind of stuff. I'm like, fuck that. Like, he was literally following me, following me to my house. And like I said, like, I just did a really sharp right turn into another street where I live. And then I lost a dude. But, like, that kind of stuff just spooked me, man, because you never know. People are crazy out here. You know, they're fucking nuts. Could have easily just, like, pull out a fucking weapon, try to shoot my ass. Could it be the other way around, like... Something was hanging out of your car, or you lost something. I don't know. <laughs> no, dude. Hell no, no, no. There was nothing wrong with my vehicle. Nothing, nothing wrong. My tailgate was closed on my truck. Nothing. There's nothing. Could have been nothing wrong. Like the dude was just being a dick. Like he was. I think he thought maybe I was trying to like piss him off because I was like, you know, trying to speed up as he was trying to speed up or something. I I don't know. But he was he was tailgating me in the beginning. I, I don't know. So just crazy people man that's the first time i ever experienced like it's a crazy road rage <laughs> road rage like that bro you're gonna shit your pants when you're gonna see his truck parked outside the nft conference in nashville <laughs> in august you're gonna shit your pants shit oh shit yeah yeah i remember the car it was a toyota toyota camry it was a great toyota camry so if i ever see a great toyota camry uh I'm gonna tailgate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, glad you got out. Of, glad you were all right on that one. Um. Yeah. Glad you're all right on that one. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So it did, it did spook me because you never know, bro. Could have easily had like gun on him. Did something stupid, you know. He also could have just been trying to tell you that there was something hanging out of the back of. Underneath <laughs> or something, there, you know, yeah, you forgot your drink, yeah. it's on top of the roof. <laughs> your baby's up there, so yeah, right, right. right. Um, you know, hey guys, sorry, I got, I got a couple minutes. I'm, I'm struggling with uh, QC. I work in a lab and I'm trying to get QC to come into control. Anyways, I wanted to mention Road Rage. I noticed Road Rage got crazy about six months into uh, the lockdowns here in the States. Um, And ever since then, people have just been incredibly on edge. And I've just noticed that in America, um, people take their road privacy very seriously. Like in Colorado, like if you're tailgating someone, like expect expect to get brake checked straight up like people will brake check for no reason i mean so i try and keep you know a, a decent amount of distance between cars but i i have noticed um especially here in colorado since covid hit just everyone's incredibly on edge and then you know just throw the politics into the matter and people are just already pissed at the world and it's just not a good combination I mean, I find myself quick to anger these days myself. So, anyways, that's my take on that. And I'm just sitting here troubleshooting QC and trying to trying to get shit to come out right. Fun, fun, fun. Are you uh, are you here in East Denver, XO? No, I'm in uh, I'm in Western Slope, uh, Colorado. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Are you coming out? Are you going to be coming out here for East Denver and any of the events out here? Yeah, I wish I could. I, my my job is kind of a niche job, and um, 
the hospital I work for has a hard time finding coverage. And I even gave them like 40 days heads up. I was like, hey, like this is happening. I need this day off or this weekend off. And they're like, no, like we don't have anyone to work your shift. Told me, future, just give us 60 days heads up. And I was just like, oh, go fuck yourself. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we get for getting into a niche, niche career. That's when I give them two week notice. I would, I would if I didn't have a child, but I have a child here kind of out of wedlock. And so I'm kind of stuck in this region if I want to be a good dad. And yeah, that's what it is. You know, we have, we hire travelers for 150% more than what I make. And they're like just trash employees. Don't give a fuck about anything. So they'll leave rage and out, like trying to fucking make sure that the QC comes in and I don't know that they've left the region out and it's degraded over time and it's one problem for another. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to complain. I'm just having a rough night. <laughs> well, um, totally understand and everyone's entitled to have rough times. So, number one, just know that you're doing some awesome, awesome shit for a horrible company so you can do awesome shit with your child. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, I get the luxury of kind of being by myself, listening to people chat and participating in the DeFi world at night. So it's not bad. Good deal, actually, for the most part. Yeah. Not, not, a, not a bad thing there at all. So, but... We know where it is. It is now 1.16. Um, and I want to just thank everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up this show, but we're going to do uh, what we always do with every Taco Bites as, as we wrap this up. One little squid, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Corporate Bruce, XOXO, thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is going to be a closing circle round. XOXO, closing thoughts. Uh, closing thoughts. Uh, I liked the, um, the renewables talk, Uh, the NFT talk was good. Um, just getting an overall view on what it is that you guys have to do. Um, it was, it was all great listening to it. Um, how you guys promote yourself, bot versus no bot. Um, yeah. So it gave me a pretty good insight on what to expect, uh, from my fellow contributors. Nice, nice. Yeah, no. Um, been in blockchain for close to eleven years, and uh, bots used to be the way just to get bigger eyes. Um, but now it's it's proof of concept first, rather than proof of proof of uh, participation. So, build it before they will come, type of thing. Corporate Bruce, corporate Bruce, closing thoughts. Yeah, not so much bubble, but he kind bubble, but kind of nice talk. Nice to talk a little about the other side of renewable energy and carbon credits, um, and then also just stake Juno at Cosmic Space as Cosmos Spaces validator. What I can say. Yeah, no, no, uh, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of human protocol. So yeah, no, uh, Lil Squid. Closing thoughts. Hey, I, I enjoyed the, uh, just your like overview of how it is to be involved in like Web three full time. I've always been very interested in, in seeing how it's like because I think one one of these days I'll eventually make that leap where I, you know, you know, get involved in Web three full time. Right now I work in aerospace full time, so kind of doing both right now web3 and aerospace so it's pretty yeah. cool pretty cool what you do bro keep it up hey right, thank you thank you yeah no always help, help willing to work uh for other projects because it's one of those things people are like how are you doing all of this i'm like you're all moving everyone's moving in the same direction um it's not competition it's not who was there first it's how can we build together you know so that's one of the best things about it. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, Taco Bites, your daily bite of DJ episode 192. We're coming up. Uh, we will be, at the, you know, this this program has been alive for over six months now. So it's pretty uh, amazing to see how this has been growing over the years. Um, Move through different channels. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, there is a, uh, you know, as a, I close out every space with uh, my two words of wisdom. Uh, a closed mouth cannot be fed and you cannot feed a closed mouth, meaning no one knows you're looking for opportunity if you don't tell anyone. And you can't benefit from opportunity if you're not ready for it. So, um, yeah. And uh, last but not least, uh, I have to li- we, we close every space with the best joke on the face of the planet. This is how we end every episode. Um, little Squid uh, and, and Bruce and XO, you guys are new up here, so... Uh, this is how we do every episode. Uh, so much love to everyone for joining us tonight. And it sees who can help us with this best joke. Little Squid, are you ready for the best joke on the face of the planet? I'm terrible at jokes. I don't even remember jokes, bro. So I'm, I'm out. I'm out on this. <laughs> I, I, oh, no. This is, it's the same joke. This is the same joke we tell every night on how yeah. we close Taco Bites. Okay. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. I'm ready for a joke, guys. All right. Knock, knock. Okay, who's there?